Here is a nice calorimetry problem. This problem is going to be backwards from what we did in class. In class, what we did was we went forwards, um, building up the theory step by step, logically adding complications along the way. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to measure a silver bar. So we're going to have a silver bar. Um, let's draw the silver bar something like that. And that silver bar um, is going to have a heat rise. It's going to rise 10 degrees centigrade um, while it absorbs a certain amount of heat. So if you remember from class, we had a... Um, we had a bar chart something like this right and we said okay we end up with an equilibrium temperature something like that and um here this is your final temperature tf and this is the rate at which the um heat is increasing as you increase the temperature uh, this area here is your um, is your heat itself. This distance here is the mass times the specific heat of the material. Remember in class I drew some lines here with little arrows indicating that we'd started from this initial temperature and gone up to this final temperature. Okay. So, we've got this silver bar. We know how much we've heated it up. We know how much it weighs, right? And we know how much energy we've put in, and we're going to measure the specific heat. This is what we're looking for here, the C. This is, the, um, so this is how most materials measurements are made. You're usually looking at what, is, what are the properties of this material. Uh, probably wouldn't be silver because everybody knows the specific heat of silver. But you have a new material, you want to measure its um, specific heat, or you want to measure uh, something else. Uh, you want to get those numbers this way. So, so this is something that people do in the lab every day. Um, po possibly not this, this way. Um, so we can have our representation like that, and we've got some QN over here. We can call this Q, QN, so it's energy going into the system. All right, so that is basically what's happening here. Um, so we want to identify that in a little more detail, right? right? So um, let's see, what are we given? We're given a silver bar. That bar has a mass, we'll call that mass M, of 525 grams. It does now, it's 525 grams now, whatever it was before, who cares? Um, let's see, what else do we know? We know that it undergoes a temperature change. Uh, well, that's that we're given that and we know that it is heated okay and so we put some heat in heat into our system q in and that amount of heat in is 1.23 kilojoules 1.23 kilojoules heat is energy joules are energy um, so we've got mass, we've got some heat in, and we've got a temperature change. And that temperature change, um, delta T, is equal to 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, so those are the specifications for the rod and for how much heat or put in, how much heat is put in all that other stuff uh, the only thing we need to know is what do we want to find as I said before we want to find the specific heat of silver we're going to find the specific heat 
of silver. C. Okay. Um, okay, so we've got our ID, we've got our representation, we know everything about the problem, we know what everything looks like, and so let's go to the concept. What sort of concept are we looking here? This is a calorimetry problem. It's just backwards. And we want to identify the main equation. And that's Q is equal to MC delta T. Obviously, this is far too easy for um, anything challenging or learning, but it's a good example of how to actually use this, this equation. So what am I going to do here? I want to find C, right? So basically, the best thing to do is isolate C um, and then make sure that we have all of our other variables, which we do. I mean, they're given in the problem statement. We have the Q, we have the M, we have the delta T. We don't really have a lot to worry about. We just go ahead and write down our answer. Um, and that answer is C is equal to Q in over M delta T, which is equal to 123,000 joules over um, 0 0.525 kilograms times 10 degrees C. So, at this point we're almost done. We just have to type some numbers into the calculator. Um, let me do that yeah, into my cell phone, I guess. 0 0.525. And we get the amazing and astounding answer of 234 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade. There's our answer. Um, so let's see, how can we check that? Uh, check. Uh, one, uh, I happen to know that the um, specific heat of copper is approximately uh, 300 joules per kilograms per degree C. So that's near. So this is reasonable. Uh, another check might be just the units. So the units for C are um, joules per kilogram per degree centigrade. This is exactly what we need this to be. Um, that, that's what it is. Um, uh, we can go all the way through to the dimensions if you'd like. So. Units of J, units of M to the minus 1, units of, oh, excuse me, kilograms, and degree C to the minus 1, which is equal to M L squared T to the minus 2. Uh, what else do we have here for fun? Um, M to the minus 1 and theta to the minus 1 which is L squared T to the minus two theta, and those are the correct dimensions for the specific heat, uh, as, are, as are those. So we've got two checks there. They're both perfectly fine. Thank you very much.